Off the chain. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of uh, Off the Chain with your host Amel Nene. And today we have uh, Baru Sa- Sadogoski. Is that how we say it, Baru? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 very clear. Hello. <laughs> All right. So uh, Baru is from uh, JFrog. He's uh, uh, you know, an advocate for JFrog, and yeah, uh, they're also working with some of the uh, cognitive Kubernetes stuff and. Uh, Barry is here today so that we talk around uh, the uh, cloud native Kubernetes uh, DevOps uh, that uh, uh, Jeff Rock is actually doing at the moment. So Baru, you want to introduce yourself? You want to talk about yourself a little bit? Uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Hello and welcome. My name is Barok Sadogurski. I'm the Chief Sticker Officer, I'm, but also Head of DevOps Advocacy with JFrog. Um, I do DevRel for a really long time by now, a close to 10 years already. And um, um, JFrog as a company, which is driven by uh, by developers and by by software engineers, uh, and makes products for uh, developers and software engineers, is obviously uh, strategically invested in in developer relations. And um, this is this is what I do. All right. So your role as an advocate, uh, you go around talking about uh, Jeff Rob and what, what exactly does Jeff Rob do for, you know, the listeners who don't know anything yeah, about so, Jeff Rob? Yeah, so, so Jeff Rob basically helps you to release faster. Mm-hmm. And for that, we have a set of products in the DevOps automation space. Uh, we have a continuous integration, continuous delivery tool. Uh, we have artifact repository, which basically is a, is a uh, is a pipeline for uh, it's a tool to implement your a uh, continuous delivery pipeline we have a, a security and license compliance tool which mm-hmm. recursively analyzes the binaries that go through this pipeline to ensure uh, security and compliance um, and we have tools for oversighting this all complicated business so uh, uh, yeah it's basically uh, we help we help you the developers the software engineers release faster. Yeah, so uh, I see you're also uh, an advocate, uh, actually an ambassador for the CNCF, so which is the Cloud Native uh, Computing Foundation, not the CNCF in France, which is nothing to do with it. So uh, uh, what, what exactly do you do? Um, you know, how do you work with this uh, CNCF and you know, in terms of uh, the frog and CNCF uh, and the Cloud Native stuff? Uh, yeah, so um, we are a gold member of CNCF, the Cloud Native Foundation. Um, and that's because we believe that the CNCF tools uh, and uh, CNCF standards are um, uh, very important for advancing DevOps. Um, mm-hmm. In the end of the day, um, most of the CNCF tools are complementary to what we do. Some of them compete, but but mm-hmm. still we feel that um, we um, it's, it's up to uh, engineers to decide what's best for them, which tool to use. So despite the fact that we have some competing tools in CNCF landscape, um, we still um, support and we're still strongly believers that this foundation is, is extremely important for advancing um, the right practices in uh, cloud native computing, which is closely related, obviously, to DevOps, although not a requirement. So, in order to use uh, uh, JFrog, on uh, what about DevOps feature does JFrog actually provide? You know, uh, for someone that wants to start a project on, uh, uh, let's say, Kubernetes. So, what are the features? What are the, uh, you know, the function or the feature that uh, JFrog provides for making developers' life easy? Yeah, so as I mentioned, um, especially when we talk about cloud native, um, we have a continuous integration and continuous delivery tool, um, which first builds the the microservices and the binaries that you are going to deploy in your cloud native environment. And then we have an artifact repository, which also serves as container registry. In the end of the okay. day, after you build your artifacts, they are in form of containers or others, whatever they are, they go through this pipeline and in the end of the day, the delivery into your runtime environment, into your Kubernetes as you wish, is also mm-hmm. done through one of the tools that Jeffro provides, the Jeffro pipelines. Okay, so uh, one of, you know, I call, uh, based on Jeffro uh, you know, uh, practice, what's the best practice for uh, DevOps? You know, for, think about a, co- a company who actually never 
implemented uh, DevOps, right? Maybe they've been around for too long, the company's too big, and now they're trying mm -hmm. to adopt DevOps, right? So what, what are the uh, best practices that, that uh, you would uh, recommend them? Yeah, so uh, but <clears throat> one of the basic, com basic concepts of, of DevOps is, uh, um, is automation and okay. uh, automation without giving up the control. Um, and that basically means that you need to uh, curate the pipeline uh, which serves uh, to deliver the software that you write uh, to, the, to your customers uh, and make sure that this pipeline is um, as rigorous as possible in terms of what checks uh, it provides to the code. Mm -hmm. um, another concept, another best practice is um, uh, actually understanding and realizing that probably you won't be able to cover 100% of scenarios uh, and provide 100% um, uh, quality software all the way to runtime. And that means mm -hmm. that um, more often than not, something will eventually go bump in production. And that means that you need to plan for it. And it goes first to how you roll out the progressive mm -hmm. delivery, the kind of redeployments, uh, then it goes into how your software will react, and that mm -hmm. means observability and the ability to uh, make decisions based on availability of your service, and it goes into how your organization will react, and that means proper incident management, on-call transparency when you speak to your uh, users before you roll out, when they know what to expect and after something uh, went wrong in terms of uh, post-mortems uh, analysis and what steps you make to prevent this exact error to happen again. So basically, when we try to move faster with DevOps, we need mm -hmm. to remember what are the consequences and not only be prepared, but also prepare our stakeholders, the developers, folks, you might be in call, the users. Well, we do mm -hmm. progressive delivery. You might not get feature right away. And if you do, it might not work as intended. So be ready to that. So it's a lot about expectations management. It's a lot about communication, it's a lot about collaboration, both inside your organization and with your users. Okay, so based on what you just said, how, can you put that on top of all Kubernetes? Uh, you know, if you're doing, trying to implement what you just mentioned with Kubernetes, well, so would that be the same? Uh, how, will, how can you do that with Kubernetes, basically? I'm asking you have the best practices about DevOps and now you try yeah. to adopt Kubernetes as well. So yeah, how for sure. So, so Kubernetes has a lot of uh, building functions for, um, uh, for, for, for those best practices. For example, mm -hmm. service meshes, one of the reasons that they exist is to implement, um, implement canary deployment and progressive delivery, right? Uh, 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 Serving meshes are able to uh, create a progressive uh, rollout to release uh, a software to a small percentage of the users and then to roll um, to roll back um, in case that something went wrong both automatically or using uh, um, both automatically using observability uh, that is built in inside your software or manually if this is something that observed <coughs> by the team on call mm -hmm. uh, so this is one example of how you implement it. Obviously, admission hooks that can um, uh, decide, make decisions about what, uh, 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 what, what images should be admissioned, what container should be admissioned into your, into your cluster or not, based on mm -hmm. uh, the decisions, based on the information that you have, the metadata that, that you have from your pipeline, for example. They, mm -hmm. So uh, all this is, um, built into um, into on on those practices of releasing faster and doing our best to have it under control. Okay, so uh, you did mention DevSecOps, right? And that's yes, one of, of the course, sectors. Of that's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you explain more around uh, you know around DevSecOps? Uh, so DevSecOps is the understanding that security cannot be uh, cannot be uh, afterthought. Uh, you cannot now um, create your software and be ready to roll it out 
and then mm -hmm. suddenly decide, oh, you know what? We are not ready because we didn't check security. Let's stop everything and try to um, try to secure it. It also cannot be afterthought in development. Well, um, oh, you know what? Now we won't allow using any dependencies because we need to uh, to check them first. Um, DevSecOps is an implementation of security practices which are streamlined with the rest of our continuous delivery processes. It means that, as I mentioned, instead of trying to secure each and every release, each and every version, each and mm -hmm. every update, instead we secure, we bake this security into our pipeline and we make a security checks as a part of, um, of everything else. So basically like you do, you run your unit tests mm -hmm. with your builds, this is how you bake quality into the pipeline. In the same way, you implement security checks using JFrog X-Ray or other tools and then bake them into your pipeline as well. So what is JFrog uh, X-Ray? How does it work? Um, so JFrog X-Ray actually uh, scans the artifacts which get into JFrog Artifactory, which get mm -hmm. into this artifact repository or um, the container registry. Um, and uh, it does it by recursively opening all those archives that we deal with. And most of the, most of the binaries in this world today are archives. When you look at Docker layer, it's an archive. Mm -hmm. You look at Debian package, it's an archive. You look at RPM package, it's an archive. You look at Java jar file or WAR file, it's an archive. So mm -hmm. opening those archives and discovering other binaries inside recursively until we have the entire tree of this artifact. Once we realized those dependencies of the artifact, we can then identify them, usually by checksum, and then mm -hmm. check with, with security databases, both internal that we gathered in JFrog and external, like National Vulnerability Database or um, uh, um, um, uh, VulnDB, which is external database by risk-based security that we use, et cetera, et cetera, and then bring those results back in. Once we have those results, we can make decisions. Should we, for example, um, break the build because we found um, uh, some, um, some security vulnerabilities? And uh, the build is, is soon enough because we commit often. So we get this feedback very, very rapidly. We can even uh, uh, shift it uh, more to the left and uh, um, use um, IDE plugins for developers themselves. When, okay. they, add, when they add a dependency uh, on, on this early stage, we can already <clears throat> say, well, this dependency has a vulnerability. Please think about, uh, please think about whether you want to uh, use it or, or not. Mm -hmm. So uh, what Kubernetes, what should, what, you know, I know that Joe Frog, you know, working with the, uh, Cloud Native Foundation, and also available on Kubernetes. But a lot of people still don't understand really what why they should move to Kubernetes or why they should you know, try out the old Kubernetes. You know, what's your view on that? Well, uh, I mean, it's it's legit. Not everybody needs to move to Kubernetes, right? There are Kubernetes is no way a prerequisite for uh, for DevOps. We obviously easily can uh, implement Kubernetes. Uh, sorry, implement DevOps with with other um, uh, with other means. We can do serverless. We can do uh, infrastructure as a service from one mm -hmm. of the cloud providers. We can do it even uh, within our own organization with our own centers and our own data center. The Kubernetes is just one of the ways in which it's very convenient to run microservices written as uh, um, to run in containers. But mm -hmm. it's in no way it is something mandatory that otherwise we really cannot uh, uh, cannot do DevOps. It's not, Kubernetes is not necessarily DevOps and DevOps is by way not uh, a requirement for uh, Kubernetes. Oh, very good, have a very good point there. And uh, but how does someone one start with, uh, you know, applying DevOps to the practice? You know? so, 
I'm playing DevOps is first of all about um, uh, about collaboration. It's about uh, procedures. It's about how we work together. It's about how we realize that we need to move faster. We need to optimize the bottleneck, and we need mm -hmm. to go and progressively eliminate those bottlenecks more often than not in changing the way we work. And this mm -hmm. is in the some point of time we can decide that we cannot deploy those monoliths into our data centers anymore. And we want to move to the cloud because it will mm -hmm. save us money and effort and we will be able to release faster. But this decision should come from analysis and understanding that the monolith and the data, ser the data center is our bottleneck. Because if it's not, then we should go and optimize what the bottleneck really is. Oh, that's oh, really good. Then, uh, uh, the next thing I was going to actually ask around JFrog, uh, what language does it support? What technology, you know, some of your competitors uh, support the likes of Java and probably not supporting Go. So if you're trying to run something like similar to X-Ray, we probably just work with a certain type of language. So what language is supported by uh, what JFrog supports? Yeah, so we try to be as universal as possible. We support uh, dozens, I think, if I'm not in error, around 30 different languages and um, uh, and, and uh, package managers in Artifactory. Mm -hmm. We support uh, b b uh, dozens of uh, languages and uh, and, uh, and tools in JFrog as well. So basically, we I can um, say it with a high degree of certainty that when you um, use JFrog, whatever you use, JFrog tools will support uh, what you use, unless it's like something really obscure. Do you support OpenShift? Um, yes, of course. So OpenShift, OpenShift is a Kubernetes. It's a Kubernetes uh, implementation. So mm -hmm. obviously, when OpenShift needs a standard Docker registry, we are there to uh, we're there to support it. Oh, that's that's good. So uh, around the the all no JFrog or the of the all uh, cloud native, and you know most of them are going to be microservices being you know, all deployed into all. Uh, uh, you know, to the environment, the Kubernetes environment, or whatever environment they are. But uh, are you guys actually open source? Are you open source? Or is there some licensing? Uh, uh, are you open source? Do you provide any open source license? Uh, yeah, so um, we have different prices for, for, for different tools, and we have a suit of free and or open source uh, tools. For example, mm -hmm. one of the uh, more popular one um, is the Jeffro Container Registry, um, which is uh, free for use. And I would obviously claim uh, one of the most um, uh, advanced uh, uh, container registries out there. So mm -hmm. definitely try it. Just Google Jeffro Container Registry and you'll get it. Uh, there are others, free tools and also free services. So for example, mm -hmm. we run uh, the biggest um, Java a artifact repository in the world, JCenter. We run the biggest Go uh, artifact repository in the world, the Go Center. Uh, mm -hmm. We actually own um, an open source C++ um, dependency management tool, Conan, and run the repository for that, Conan Center. So we do a lot of free stuff for, for, for the developers. And uh, obviously, Jeffro Container Registry that you can consume both on-prem and in the cloud for free is definitely one of them. Okay, so developers, uh, you know, can run J, uh, JFrog locally on the, as a standalone. Uh, did they run? Did they have to run for a managed uh, service? Oh uh, no, no, it's all, it's all, it's all hybrid. You can decide what, how do you consume it? Do you prefer it on prem? Do you prefer it on the cloud? As I already mentioned, going for the cloud mm -hmm. is not a prerequisite of DevOps. It's really related of what are you uh, doing. Uh, uh, and uh, um, we don't want to control it. We don't want to decide for developers and for organization what is the right thing for them. If they prefer to run this tool on-prem because mm -hmm. they're not ready into the cloud, because as I mentioned, their bottleneck is somewhere else, then by all means, we won't be the ones who will force you to take um, a, a cloud-only solution. 
On the other side, if you are on the cloud and your uh, CI pipeline is on the cloud and then you actually deploy to the cloud, obviously uh, you should have your, um, uh, your pipelines and your registry and your, all your repositories in the cloud as well and we will meet you there. So because we truly believe that no tool is a prerequisite for DevOps and mm -hmm. it's all about processes and collaboration, our tools support your situation and not the other way around. Yeah, that's really a great uh, value. And uh, you provide a, give a lot of information and I'm sure a lot of people listening now will be uh, really happy what you gave, especially around the DevOps, around the collaboration and the processes and the tools. Uh, and I will uh, recommend everybody to try JFrog, you know, uh, next time they work on uh, any DevOps based project and any CI CD pipeline in place. So it will be really great. But thanks again, Baruch for coming on, on the show. And uh, this is your host, Armin Nene, and uh, thanks everybody to uh, coming to uh, Off The Chain uh, podcast. And uh, until then, see you next time. Great, thank, thank you. you very much for having me, Armel. Thank you.